Oh. <laughs> They've got our back. Now, so, hello. Good afternoon. Hello. That, that's more like, come on, a, a gentle ripple at least. Come on. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Well, hello. Uh, welcome to the Hob Horrible Histories Masterclass, or Anatomy of a Horrible Hit, as uh, we like to call it. Hopefully, you're all aware of Horrible Histories. I'm sure you are. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here, obviously. Uh, you, you've seen it, have you? Do you love it? Do you think it's fantastic? Yeah? Let's feel the love. We love this show, don't we? Yeah, I love this show. That's why I'm here. I have nothing to do with this program, uh, except I watch it, and I love it, and my children watch it and love it. And uh, when I was invited to, uh, to host this panel, I was absolutely... I was uh, thrilled and delighted. I'm here in Edinburgh doing a stand-up show, so this is very early in the morning for me. Now, <laughs> there are four series into the show. The CBC, CBBC programme has gone from strength to strength. And in a very short amount of time this afternoon, we're going to try and dissect this comedic beast as best as we can. Although, obviously, we're not going to try and, you know, if you do dissect comedy too much, it can disappear, it can vanish. So we're going to talk to the people who make the programme, how the programme came to fruition. Now, this prestigious panel, they're going to share their personal insight and experiences of making this series. But before that, Bob Hale, who sadly cannot be with us today, has recorded an exclusive Bob report to get you all up to speed on how the series landed on your TV screens. <laughs> wow. A fabulous Bob report there. And I'd like to just say a quick thanks to Larry for writing and performing that sketch for the festival, exclusively for today. Now... On to our panel. By the way, if you want to ask questions, we, we decided we're going to embrace uh, the Twitter technology. And there's a hashtag, uh, hashtag morefoot, morefoot, M-O-O-R-F, foot, obviously, morefoot, um, if you want to ask questions. Because we, we think, obviously, putting your hands up is <laughs> just asking too much of delegates today. It's just too tough. So, please welcome our panel. Please, first of all, we have comedy producer extraordinaire, one of the creative minds behind the series. It's Caroline Norris. Hello. Hello, Caroline. Hello. Sublime comedy actor is what it says here. <laughs> writer, I was given it. Writer and principal cast member of Horrible Histories, Mr. Simon Farnaby. <laughs> then we have the ultimate comedy bag of beauty and extreme. I could have, I, luckily, I didn't stop at bag. <laughs> the ultimate comedy bag of beauty and extremely talented actress, Martha Howe Douglas. <laughs> and. And an actual card-carrying boffin. You, it's rare that you meet an expert, I think, a real expert that you could throw a historical year at and he can give you an answer, but we're not going to do it now. Okay. He made me promise. Horrible History's historical consultant and general history boffin, Mr Greg Jenner. Hi. It's Greg. Thanks to all of you for joining us today. Now, Caroline, we heard of the Bob report there. It took quite a while to get the rights to make the show. Um, How's the relationship with the book? I mean, obviously, there's a hugely successful book. How has that relationship worked out with the programme? Was, was it difficult to follow the book or to then interpret it? Well, to start with, I think I felt a lot, we felt a lot of pressure that we didn't spoil the brand because kids really loved the books and we felt the pressure to live up to that. Um, so we definitely took the attitude of series from the books. Terry's quite... Um, anarchic in his attitude and he is really good at choosing the facts that kids will really engage with so we definitely start that was definitely our starting point also the books tackle some quite difficult subjects and that allowed us to do that on CBBC we were able to go well kids already know about that because it's in the books right. and I think if we'd started without the books it probably wouldn't have been allowed to be quite as naughty as it is. Different world with compliance if it's yeah, yeah. I think so and I think the books that really helped us um, and then some of the, in series one and so some of series two, we definitely we started with the books and we took our facts from the books. Um, we've sort of, we then ran out of facts in the books that we could use and so Greg has to find facts from elsewhere now. But um, the visual style of the animation? It, it, the visual style of the animation comes from the books. Basically I thought, well, this is what kids recognise as horrible histories and so when we thought about having animated links, we decided we'd use Martin Brown's illustrations because that's what, children associated with it's a very strong brand to start with so yeah. it seems silly to try and reinvent it so we so the, the anarchy the visual style yeah and, and also the way it's written I mean it has you know we, we, we sort of open you, so you open a book and it has a recipe here and then it has a letter from home and then it has a list of well there's, there's, a, there's a sketch that we've got here which is you know there was a list of accidents that members of the home guard had had mm. um the Durham home guard list of accidents that happened 
and we just took that and made that into a sketch. So, so in places there were there was material that we actually took and turned into sketches. And in places there were things like you know a recipe. We said, well, there's a cookery show, and it it feels like a sort of template for a sketch show. So, it, it definitely inspired it. So it came straight from the page to start with. Yeah, certainly. I think so. I think definitely that attitude. And then obviously there was also you know, we went, we, we looked at Python and we looked at Blackadder yeah. and, and those were the places. We, we, Dominic and I cut together a showreel of Python clips and Blackadder clips and clips of um, uh, Do Not Adjust Your Sets to say this is the sort of attitude we want it to have. Um, the stoning scene from Life of Brian uh, is both funny and also tells you that you were stoned for blasphemy and women weren't allowed at stoning. So we said, look, you learn something from it. So that was kind of that whole attitude was, was what we took into trying to make the series in the first place. Now you, you mentioned the Home Guard list of injuries sketch. Yeah, we, we we've got it. Shall we? Shall we? Shall it, we yeah, have a look at it? it? Yes. Run VT. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really funny. <laughs> yeah, that'll do, won't it? Now, so um, Greg, when you look at a sketch like that, there's people in uniforms. There's that's history, isn't it? Acting yeah. itself out. But you're the expert. It has to be run past you. You're the sort of fact sieve that the program. I'm not an expert. I'm a sort of a tyrannical pedant. I'm a, a kind of I sit in the corner, kind of going, "You can't have that. You can't have that. You can't do this." Uh, my job is to be effectively the voice of um, sort of accuracy, really, because uh, you know, on the show we are we're a comedy show, but at the same time we're kind of an educational show, and the viewers place a certain trust in us. To, uh, to get things right. You know, we're telling them things and they're believing what we're saying, so we've got to make sure the things we're telling them aren't nonsense. So my job is to ensure that what we're saying is true, which is you know, a challenge. Do you get a lot of complaints from, some, well, from actual historians or is it sort of green ink? Uh, most historians that I know are absolutely obsessed with the show. They love it. Um, I guess because it sort of promotes their area. You know, it, it's promoting history, it's telling people that history's not boring and it's can be fun as well as interesting. You know, it doesn't just have to be worthy and useful. It can be, you know, a, a lot of fun. People smearing themselves in poo, that's fun. That's good fun. So well, speak for yourself. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I've, I haven't done it in a while. But, um, uh, but we do occasionally get letters in from people, uh, often people who sort of pick on very tiny little details that aren't true, and you sort of go, well, but that isn't true. You know, we wouldn't have put it in the show if it wasn't true. But we have made a couple of mistakes. I think we've counted eight over five years or four years. Do you, what are they? Come on. <laughs> Off the top of my head, uh, George II, we got George II and George I mixed up in the order of which one had died on the toilet. Did you um, the prom? Yeah, yeah, we fixed it at the prom. Right. So we go back and fix our mistakes. Um, we said Poseidon instead of Neptune, although technically speaking, Poseidon was still technically a god with it. Anyway, um, we said uh, um, <laughs> Odin's horse had eight legs instead of six. And, you know, there's, there's a few little things. I think, I think they said Shakespeare's Globe was the first ever theatre in London, it was actually the second. So there are kind of little things that we kind of go, oh, how bad, we'll do it again. But actually, over this, these five years, there are 4,000 historical facts in the series, of which eight have been wrong. So my job is to be incredibly annoying and pour cold water on any good ideas. Uh, I'm constantly going, you can't have that, you can't have that, you can't do this. So I'm, I'm a very, very annoying person to work with. But you, 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 I mean, you sound it. With all, yeah, you know, no, I am. All, you sound yeah. like a I'm, I'm amazed my girlfriend's still with me, frankly. <laughs> um, but, How mean, do you feel it, when you get one wrong, though? Oh, I, I'm gutted. I'm genuinely gutted. It, it, it gets to my... You are, of course you all are. Yeah. yeah, because we work so hard on it. And we're so proud that you can do this. You can accomplish something which is such a... Almost a brand new format, which is yeah. factual comedy. Because you've got, I mean, the, the clip we've got coming up is, is about Hannibal, of course, the yeah. legendary Carthaginian general. Well, not who, legendary, real. Well, well, well but, but, but yeah. he's a, well, there you are, you see. <laughs> well, al well, although, or, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Al <laughs> although, what, although I would, th um, we're not going to get into this. We, before, before the session, we were in the green room arguing about history, because yeah. uh, I'm a real enthusiast for it. Which is brilliant. It's lovely not to an meet someone who cares as much as I do. Yeah, but, but everything we get from, you know, mm. from back then is, how accurate is it anyway? Well, okay, so the difference is that history is not what happened in the past. The past is what happened. History is the way we interpret that. History comes from the word uh, historia, which means the, the wise sayings of men. And in French, histoire means story. So yep. history isn't what happened. It's what we think we can probably get near to. Which, t which also so then informs 
uh, us of our present. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Which is, which is one of the interesting things about the programme, I think, is, is uh, very often you look at how disgusting customs were yeah. in different times, and it makes us feel all clean and antiseptic, I think. I think it's quite, absolutely. quite a good but thing. Now, in, anyway, so we've got Hannibal. Yeah, now, in the case of Hannibal, this is an interesting area where we do have, we've had a couple of complaints coming in from people who've said, uh, you know, I read online that Hannibal might have been black. Uh, similarly, Cleopatra may have been black, or Aesop, who's coming from the next series, may have been black. And it's, it's you know, really important that we promote multiculturalism. We do our best to include people from all over the world, different stories. We've had uh, Mary Seacole and, and um, Bill Richmond and so on. But my job is to go with the historical consensus, to go with what historians sort of generally agree on. And in the case of Cleopatra, uh, Aesop and Hannibal, the evidence suggests he was, they, they were all probably white. Uh, Hannibal himself was a um, Carthaginian, but that, that people are from the Phoenician yeah. peoples, the Semitic people, the Middle yeah. Eastern. So in this sketch, we've played him as sort of Middle Eastern with a fantastic beard, but for comic effect, he is Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, I, I thought my job is then to make something really, make it really stupid, which yeah. is what we've done. Well, I think you, you pulled that <laughs> off. Um, here's, here's uh, well, here's Hannibal. Uh. Uh, Simon, how many times have you died in horrible history? Died. Have you kept count? Because we saw you died, meet a grizzly end there um, at least twice. Died about probably seven or eight times. You have to find a new way of dying as well. <laughs> right. Every time. So yeah. you've got to have a new slant on it. So you can go big, you know, and yeah, yeah, one of those for yeah. the kids. Yeah. Or you can do a, you know, a very... <laughs> really stretches an actor. <laughs> When you die so many times. <laughs> <laughs> now, now we saw anim the, the animation featured in that. Now, uh, why, why did you stick with the cartoon style? Cause, because now you can do any anything in animation, can't you? you can that's what they asked us. They said, why didn't you make something that's a bit more modern feeling? And I said, well, because, the, because that's the style that children recognise from the books. That's what's on the cover of the books. That's what's inside the books. And it just mm. felt like the right thing. I mean... You know, also our budget's pretty tiny, so we couldn't afford to do anything very flashy or but 3D. I mean, that elephant looked really convincing. Yeah. Well, the elephant actually, <laughs> it was funny because uh, because we were saying, you want to do elephants on a plane? It's a funny joke. And then we said, but we can't get an elephant. And then uh, and they said, oh, just write it. We'll sort something out. So uh, we have some very funny model makers who made us two legs and a trunk. And that's three people mm. sort of running along with the camera. <laughs> Brilliant. Now, Martha, you, 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 you know, you've done... This is, this is a kids' TV programme, and you're a, a successful grown-ups telly person. I mean, I, although the distinction... I think, I think the amount of adults we have coming to see the programme and, and who are fascinated by the programme kind of d destroys that distinction in a way. But why did you... What, what attracted you to the show? Well, initially, when I got the audition um, and my agent said, you know, it's a, it's a kids' thing, I was like, mm, I don't really want to do... You know, I don't really want to do kids' stuff. And I didn't know the books at all. I, had no, I, didn't, I didn't read them as a kid. Um, but then when I read the sketches, they were written so well that they made me laugh. And, and I think that, that's the key to the, to the show, really, that it makes us laugh. So, you know, if it, if it works for the kids as well, that, that's, it's brilliant. Um, but, you know, history, there are so many funny, funny things about history that, that they just come out in the writing mm. because they're there for us. Um, but, yeah. I, I, but you I followed in incredible footsteps. Glenda Jackson, Kate Blanchett. And you, I think your Queen Elizabeth is definitive. Oh, the, come on. No, no, well, no, seriously, because, because uh, yours, is the most re, yours is the most realistic by far. Yeah. I, mean, the, the, I mean, the Kate Blanchett movies are nonsense history-wise, aren't they, Greg? <laughs> Go on, get started. Go on. Watch it. His blood's going to boil. I'm now. not rising to that. <laughs> no, they're all over the place. But, but I mean, you know, with the, with the teeth and the, yeah. the lead, I think you're... I mean, I, I now think of Queen Elizabeth as portrayed by you, Mark. She was pretty vile looking, but I mean, it does, it takes sort of two and a half, three hours to do the whole caboodle, but, um, but we have the most amazing makeup and costume team ever. Um, so yeah, we're very lucky. So yeah, I hope it does look very realistic. It, and it looks like a lot of fun to make. Is it fun to... to amazing. Yeah. Such yeah. yeah, it's a lot of fun. We're all, we're all pretty good friends now, so it is a lot of fun, and a lot of it, you know, these guys, interesting listening to that about, you know, the there's the historical side of it, which we don't... We, we, our job is to make the, the characters entertaining. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if, you know, Jim will turn up. I mean, it's like I was watching that sketch. And Jim's just doing... We had the Raoul Moat thing came mm. up with Gaza, Paul Gascoigne, mm. and that day. And Jim went, I'm going to go, I'm gonna do Gaza. I'm going to do Gaza in this sketch. <laughs> and, and Matt went, oh, I want to do it too, even though he can't do 
Yeah. Enjoy yeah. the accent. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm Liet. <laughs> and uh, but that's our job is to, is to make it. Yeah. So that's why it's so much fun because we make each other laugh, and we just want the characters to be memorable. I suppose. Yeah. So that the so the history seeps in. But you play one of the one of the I mean, one of the most memorable characters in the lot and. Uh, series characters, death of course. Death, yeah. You are death. I, I mean, there you death. are having died eight times. You're death himself. Is it really a historical character? <laughs> legendary. I think legendary. No, uh, that, that is legendary, legendary yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's amazing how, uh, I mean, the kids love it as well. It's so... Do you like playing death? Yeah, I do. I, I love it. I mean, that is, uh, I remember the first day, again, I didn't really know what to do, but I just went with the most scary voice I could muster. <laughs> And that's probably, that's why I'm not in horror. I mean, um, <laughs> I thought, I'll go for this booming, really fearful voice. <laughs> and then it sort of span on from there. But yeah, kids love it. It's amazing how, how that's sort of taken off because he's quite a fearful looking yeah. character. Yeah. Um, Do you love death, kids? Do you love the death bit? Do you want to see some death? <laughs> fancy some death? Do we fancy yeah. some death? Yeah, let's, uh, uh, this is for uh, Mel Belazel, who's on the more... Who, where's Mel Belazel? I'm, yeah, overexcited to be in the Hor Horrible Histories Masterclass. Yes, I'm 27. <laughs> so some death. Should we have some death? Run VT. <laughs> Uh, chilling stuff. Now, um, <laughs> <laughs> now, Martha, you've not only played Queen Elizabeth. What, which other historical figures? I play a lot of queens. A lot of queens. I do play a lot of queens. I play Cleopatra. Uh, Queen Victoria is one of my other faves. Um, yeah, and then an array of peasants. <laughs> and <laughs> peasants and, <laughs> and hags. And hags, loads of hags. hags. Yeah, yeah lots of hags. But it must be fun to play lots of d different people and oh, types it's and it's a gift it's amazing yeah no it's brilliant and and i love all the looks and you know it, mm -hmm. yeah it's amazing for us we just get to dress up all the time and the looks have really uh, are worked on i mean the the, the yeah. costumes and yeah uh, the makeup artists um have a load of pictures in the makeup truck of his of the of, you know pictures of all historical characters they're all properly researched the mm. the costume ros literally does our costumes is obsessive about the detail of the costume um, sometimes we just go, it, it's fine. I know that the dress is, is two years too late, but it's fine, it'll be fine. Yeah. Um, but I think that allows us to do the characterisation and get away with that as well, because if we looked, if we didn't look accurate, yeah. or we looked silly, you know, I mean, we do sometimes look silly, but if the beards, you know, the beards are always meticulous mm. about the beards look mm. good and... Whether they uh, had facial hair at the time, yeah. those sorts of things, they're incredibly careful about it. Yeah. So that's, uh, you're, you're sort of involved in that with, with costume yeah. as well? Yeah, unfortunately I'm involved in the whole, the whole thing all year round. Because my job starts long before anybody else's, because I do five months research before we even begin the series. So I'm on it from day one, and all, all the way through to day a million. Um, when we finish, because obviously I'm still checking everything. So, so when we look at uh, Martha now as Queen Elizabeth in this next clip, yeah. it's it's accurate. Yeah, that's probably her age, about sixty, when mm -hmm. her hair had fallen out and she'd had uh, smallpox, so she had very bad um, pock marks and skin. The teeth were rotting because she ate too much sugar. She washed her hair with urine. Uh, she wasn't in a particularly good place. I think she's also, cosmetically. <laughs> I think she's also wearing Kate Blanchett's dress from that film. Really. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're kidding? No, no. Not really. And it's in the place where that part of that film was shot. We we and go the to wig, the I think, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we get it out of costume stores. So. so it's all the, it's the same stuff, but we were just watching a clip of Queenie <laughs> outside, not Blackadder outside, and going, "Have we used that?" Yes. <laughs> wow, fantastic. Yeah. Well, let's have a look at your Blanchett beating turn as <laughs> Kate, uh, it's Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> So obviously a, a great deal of work goes into it, into every episode. How long does it take to produce an episode of Horrible Histories? The series takes about a year. So um, we are about to start shooting. I mean, yeah, I think it's a couple of months. We, we do a couple, well, Greg starts before us, but we do a couple of months of writing, uh, two or three months of writing, and then a month, we just started pre-production. We start shooting, we we'll do eight, eight weeks of filming, and then we go into the edit, which is about for three or four months to finish it. Um, and then we deliver it. So yeah, the, the, a series of 13 takes about a year altogether, I would say. Yeah, they're pleased about that. <laughs> mm, yeah. uh, and um, are, the, are the episodes pre-assembled? Have you an idea of what's no. going into each? Would you shoot the sketches and then? We try and, we, we just, we do have writers meetings where we work out what are the, you know, which facts the writers 
think we make their sketches, we commission stuff, we over commission, so we write, we commission too much material and then we'll sh overshoot by a bit, but we can't afford to overshoot, overshoot by much. Um, and it's just trying to make sure that you've got a range of stuff. I, I tend to try and, you know, you, you maybe do, say, eight stupid deaths because you won't have one in every episode. We have a song for every episode. There are certain things you'll do for every episode, mm. but apart from that, it's just making sure that you've got a range of material. And then when we get into the edit suite, we just stick up a load of, uh, a load of, car a load of index cards with the sketches written on and the eras, and we just try and pair them up and, mm. um, and just try and make sure. Because sometimes, you, you know, you write a sketch and you think it's going to be the funniest thing you've ever shot, and it turns out not to be as good as you as you think it's going to be and sometimes a sketch because of a performance comes out much better than you thought so you can't tell what's going to go with what until right. you get into the edit suite and, and is there any improvisation in the in the when when you come to actually playing the scenes do you improvise at all or is it because of the need for accuracy <laughs> uh it, 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 is, is there that flexibility there's there's a bit of room there's a bit of room yeah as you say once you once you you can't really mess about with the with the fact you know, with the historical bit. But once you've got that out of the way, <laughs> you can arse about a bit. There's, yeah, there's quite, quite a bit goes on. And we have little things that we try and do. I think I said the phrase, hey now, about 50 times in various different accents. And it's just little, Ben says hot sausage quite a lot yeah. for Matt reasons. Matt a lot of so at the end of the oh, yeah, yeah, so... so. Um, but also that yes in the Home Guard sketch where they go um, health and safety and they say yes, yeah. that was there, you know, yeah. I mean they do yeah. they absolutely bring it to life and then we cut the bits out that, that don't, don't work. work. But so yeah, absolutely. And then sometimes you'll uh, leave, it, leave it running, you know, at the end of a sketch and you'll get an extra little punchline or, or yeah. you mm. know, yeah. But I mean, I suppose the, 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 the real question at the heart of all is why, why do you think it's worked so well with children and families? What, what's... Come on, what's the secret? Um, it's the, that's it's really the... good fun. I think history is really good fun. I think yep. the facts that we're dealing with are really good fun. Then we write sketches that also make us laugh. And then the cast try and make one another laugh. So it is, it's as much fun as it looks. And I think there's a real joy behind it. I think we're all, you know, yeah. we, we all, Greg will tell us a fact and we'll go, oh my God, that's brilliant. We have to do a sketch about it and we have to get Simon to play this part. And it's all about having really good fun, but we're all also fascinated by the facts. So I think. Yeah, I think it's a dual. It's not often that you get that sort of parent child relationship where they actively want encouraging them mm. to watch it, but they want to watch it anyway. You know, which yeah. is, so say, you know, Hannah Montana, you might not get a lot from it. I mean, I don't, I've never seen it. <laughs> oh, I have. But, uh, <laughs> I've had but, to watch bloody hours of that. Yeah, but that's the type of thing you'd go, maybe you don't watch so much of that. <laughs> but yeah, it's that, uh, you, you can, you can, it's nice to be able to encourage you, your kids to like something that they already like. The you songs, know. I think, we started with um, the idea that if we did a parody of, you know, David Bowie, uh, it would make us laugh, but also the song has to be the, the, song, the song has to be something that will make children laugh. But the, the fact that it's David Barry is a good joke for us. Mm. Um, but I basically said it, this will be brilliant because kids will think we've invented all of this music yeah. and they'll think we're geniuses. Yeah. And we did an Adamant song, and somebody said they, they oh god, but that's amazing that somebody, Adamant thing. And somebody said they'd showed their kid their kids some uh, some Adamant, and they said they nicked that off horrible histories. <laughs> <laughs> So the music, because the music is a big, big, big part of the show, and, mm. and w w how, how do you decide what to parody and ar arrive at just what you think will be fun? Yeah, sometimes we, I mean, we're doing a Smith song for um, <laughs> Dickens, Charles Dickens as, as Morrissey for this new series, <laughs> just because I really wanted to do a Smith song. So sometimes it's just massively self-indulgent, and then sometimes it's because something seems to fit with a story. We're doing a Owen Glendower, so obviously that's Tom Jones. Um, and sometimes it's, we think, because we, we tend to think of quite old-fashioned music, and so we sometimes think, well, what's the modern, you know, what are the modern things? I mean, mm. Cleopatra was definitely, we decided she was, she was her, the latter-day Lady Gaga, so that's yeah. why we did that. Sometimes it, it comes about in all sorts of different ways, and for the, for the RAF song, yeah. um, Greg told us about Douglas Bader, and, and we said, oh, they could be a boy band, and then Douglas he told us about Douglas Bader, so we said, and how he'd, he'd had to give up flying and then came back when the war mm. started, which we said, oh, like Robbie Williams, let's make it take that. So um, sometimes the song, well, I mean, the David Bowie thing just came from, we said we're going to do Darwin because of ch, -ch, -ch changes and yeah. 
So sometimes <laughs> it's from something really pathetic. <laughs> it just, something just makes us laugh. So. Yeah. Right. But Bar I mean, Bardo himself wasn't really a barrel of laughs, was he? No. Not, <laughs> no, not the most charming man, but a, a brilliant pilot. And brilliant pilot. And he is as played by Jim Howitt. Well, yeah. yeah. yeah of course. <laughs> uh, well, we've got the RAF song. Should we, should we have a look at that now? Yes. In a minute. <laughs> RVD. Watch out for my star turners, Stan is lad. <laughs> That's all I said. <laughs> yeah, I just said, do you want to go and sit in the, in the Spitfire? They were all like, yes, yeah. I'm going to be in that song. Where, where were the Spitfires? Where did you go for that? Up at, um, what's it Duxford. 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 Yeah. Imperial oh, okay. War Museum, Duxford. Yeah. I've flown in one there. Have you? Oh. Yeah, I win. Have we, have we, have <laughs> we, we got the, 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 the yeah. tape of that now? Ah, oh, it's wonderful. Oh, brilliant. Um, uh, well, we have a, um, on our Morefoot hashtag, don't forget the hash, hashtag, Lindsay Clay says, please, please give me a horrible histories exclusive fact that I can out-fact the kids with when I get home. Oh, wow. Hashtag massive street cred. <laughs> massive street cred. <laughs> Greg? Um, God, you put me on the spot now, haven't you? Um, i trying to think of a sketch we're doing this year. Um, Aesop, the, the writer of the fables, was um, thrown off a cliff for arguing with people. He had been sent by, the, by King Chris to give money to people, to go and just distribute cash out. And he was such an annoying person by doing it. He kept sort of trying to tell them moral tales that they picked him up and chucked him off a cliff. Brilliant. Yeah. That's, a good, uh, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a, my reaction. Brilliant, let's do a sketch. <laughs> so that's an upcoming sketch. Up and coming. Yeah. Wow, brilliant. Who played Aesop? Oh, we haven't we done, done it yet. yet. Oh, 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 of course, sorry. Get your bids in. Uh, yeah, oh, brilliant, yeah. Um, now, uh, is it? Here's the thing, did you think this show was going to, when you started on Horrible Histories, when you got the first series away, did you think you'd, you know, here we are, you're, you're a delegate at the TV festival, bestowing wisdom on no. fellow delegates? I mean, did we you think thought, it was going to be huge? We, we were really pleased with it, we were really proud of it. I mean, we are really proud of it. It's, um, it, because it's a show that, that, you know, the writers write fantastic sketches for, and then the actors make them better and then the costume and, and everybody in costume and design do their own jokes, design put their own jokes into things mm. and everybody adds a little bit and then platform put things into it and everyone involved makes it that little bit better so at every stage it becomes better and better and better. So by the end of it I can go look what I made and it's nothing really to do with me, it's to do with everybody else yeah. who's involved. So it's a show that I think when we got to the end of it we said that's, it's, it's exactly what we wanted it to be, only so much better and you can never predict that it's going to come out that well we were, we, we were so lucky to get the cast that we got and you know to have the team that we have I think um, I think we were really proud of it and we hoped that lots of people would like it but we had no idea that it was going to end up the weird thing is being inside it because I'm we're always making it it doesn't you don't really get to notice the success so of it the very view often. doesn't change from inside the no program. you'll just keep I just keep going oh god what are we going to do now we We've got to keep this up now because people, we don't want to disappoint people by ever doing anything that's... that's I, don't want, I don't ever want people to say it's not as good as it used to be, so we <laughs> drive ourselves pretty hard. Um, you know, going the, the prom, which I know you're going to show something of, the prom was the thing that made me realise how many people knew about it and watched it and liked it because they all turned up dressed up in costumes and it was quite terrifying. But um, until then, you, you sort of only hear from parents who say, oh, my kids love that. And, suddenly everyone's heard of it, mm. and it is quite weird. Mm. And being stars of the programme, what, what's that done? I, Martha? I, I just get to live my dreams of being like a pop star as well. <laughs> um, I'm very lucky to be, yeah. We, I mean, I think for us, in, in terms of the, what we get to play, you know, the, the, the amount of, of characters that we get to play, and, and age-wise as well, you know, normally you're sort of cast in your, how you yeah. look now, but we get to play mm. so many different, you know, um, so many different characters, and, and then get to do the, the singing and dancing, which I love. Um, so, you know, yeah, it's brilliant. I had no idea it would be such a... I thought I was just going to be, you know, just a chance to do a, a funny Nazi, <laughs> and that no one, no one would see it. And, uh, <laughs> but now everyone's seen my funny Nazi. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's amazing. You get the amount of... I mean, if, if you, you know, go for a walk in a park or anywhere, anywhere where there's kids around, you oh, it's a matter of time before you'll be asked for photographs and stuff like yeah. that. And they're all, uh, just seem to absolutely love it. Mm. So it's, yeah, it's great. It's, it's, I, don't it's think we, I don't think any of us ever thought we'd end up working with the League of Gentlemen. Oh yeah, and the League of Gentlemen <laughs> coming was, was, yeah, I was a huge fan of theirs yeah. back in the day. And then 
I went to see uh, uh, Reese Shearsmith do ghost stories and we were in the bar afterwards and I was quite nervous about, I thought I'll go and chat to him the same. I yeah. And then he was really nervous as well. He was like going, I'm sorry, I just want to, I'm a big fan of the show. Really? And, <laughs> yeah, and did uh, one of the, he, he went, uh, that's the way we do things in medieval Scotland. <laughs> which is one of my uh, catchphrases that we thought we'd get complaints about from Scottish audience, didn't but we? they actually seemed to, they did. loved they it. Didn't, they didn't complain they about that. They complained about it. Yeah, about it's fine. But, uh, yeah, they didn't so recognise it as Scottish, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's when you kind of, yeah, you go, well, that's, that's really satisfying. You know? mm. um, people who used to idolise would... Uh, now but you've not been, you know, thing. chased around service stations or anything by... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we were, yeah, this guy came up to me in a service station with his two kids and he was like going, yeah, he'll do it, he'll do it, he'll do it. All right, do, do the stupid death. <laughs> do the stupid death. And I was going, what, what? I'm, not, I'm not sure what you mean. He's going, do it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> I only realised about an hour later he wanted me to do the, the dance. You know, do yeah. that. Amazing. I didn't do it. <laughs> but I will for now, won't. No, no, you won't. No. <laughs> and, and, a, and a comedy award for best sketch show. Where, where oh, yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, yeah. That was for what's supposed to be a kids' program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's a family show. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a, I remember somebody said to me, what would you do if you did this for grown-ups? And I kind of went, the same. It, I don't know, the same. Maybe we wouldn't have a puppet rat, but. But so, the, so I mean, in terms of making a comedy program, the issues of, uh, you know, we're always the, the endless debates about edge in comedy, aren't there? Constantly, mm -hmm. there's arguments about edge, what's acceptable, um, uh, all this sort of thing. Where are your edges? Because it's a children's program, and yet you've had Cleopatra uh, commit suicide. And, uh, yeah. uh, uh, where, are you, where are your edges? Our uh, edges are where you, where you say, can you make a joke about that? What's the joke? What's the angle? What's the comedy angle? So. Um, you know, we read all the, we did, well, the first year we did uh, World War II and we got to the Holocaust and we read that page and we just went, no, it's not really a comedy angle on this that we can do. Mm. So there are things that don't have punchlines. There are things that just, I don't know, do you know what? It's, it's a matter of kind of judgment. You feel it, you think this doesn't work, this isn't funny. And sometimes yeah. we write sketches and we just say, this just feels wrong. Um, but with things like Cleopatra's suicide, I think, you know, she did kill herself and children do learn that at school and it's about finding a way of doing it without it being... I, I've just, somebody's just written a sketch about the Battle of Watling Street and this, um, uh, Boudicca at the end of it drinks poison and dies and I said, I don't think we should have that on screen. I think mm. if, she's, if she can say she's going to do it, but I don't think we should see her doing it yeah. because it feels wrong and I don't know, it's hard to explain where that comes from it just I think I tend to think if I sat in a room with a 10 year old and watched this would it make me feel uncomfortable and if it would then we probably that's probably where the line is but, but in an argument say with compliance uh, when yeah. you know well, well we sorry a, this has happened too bad yeah we had an argument with, with compliance about Cleopatra's suicide because they said you can't show suicide and I said well I can't change history that's what happened <laughs> um, I actually said if anyone, if any child, because it's an internet, online internet sketch, and I said, if any child orders an ASP online and uses it to commit suicide, <laughs> I will take personal responsibility for it. Um, and so also, far, so good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was in the books as well, and also we were able to go online and say, look, there's the, here are loads of children's school projects about Cleopatra and about how she died, and, and you know, um, and a lot of the attitude is, you know, how, you know, look at these stupid people, look at what these stupid people did, mm. and it's mm. like terrible cruelty that happened in the Roman arena, but we were just saying, oh, our attitude for children is, why would anyone do that? You know, how, how stupid. So as long as you've got a person to say, look at that stupid person, it's, that seems to be the way that it, that it works. And, and now, you're about to start filming series six. Five. Five, Five. Five sorry. <laughs> I'm reading this at a distance. Um, <laughs> any clues about who? I mean, we know we've got Aesop coming. Dickens. Dickens. Then Dickens. Who else are we doing? Uh, 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 <laughs> loads of people. Augustus Caesar. Yeah, Greg's making us fill in all the gaps. Sorry. He's going, you have to do this. Right. But it's not funny, Greg. You have to find people. something funny about it. Um, a bit more Churchill. Yeah. We Churchill. like Churchill. We love. Churchill in his bath. Churchill in his bathtub. Um, but you're not giving, that, that, that's not 13 programmes, is it? No. But, but no. You're not giving much away. Oh, Joan of Arc is Jesse J. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
because of the fringe. Because of the fringe. Uh, we're um, doing a sort of an Aretha Franklin. Homage. Oh, we're doing Rosa Parks. We got, we're doing yeah. a little bit of 20th, 20th century because um, uh, there were a few things that we thought we ought to tackle and, and uh, we wanted to do a bit about civil rights. So yeah. we've got, and Richie Webb has written the most brilliant Rosa Parks song. Yeah. Um, Fantastic. It's a sort of Motown. It's brilliant. Uh, I, I hope uh, it's as brilliant once we've shot it. It's, at the moment, it's only got Richie's voice on it, singing in a singing high, so it's slightly disturbing. <laughs> but I think once Dominic, Dominique's got her hands and on it. And there's Lord Byron in a sort of Twilight spoof. Yeah. Right. Where these, this is what's written, whether they end up on telly or not. Yeah. I don't yeah. know, because yeah. there, there'll be some things that won't fit in the schedule, but, uh, and then some things we'll shoot that won't work, but that's broadly. Now, you mentioned the prom earlier. Yeah. Now you've got a, a, a Doctor Who took 40 years to get a prom or something, didn't it? And <laughs> there you are in with the proms mm -hmm. very quickly. What was, was the prom like to do? Yeah, I mean, it was pretty just, terrifying. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty scary. Yeah. It was 6,000 uh, people at 6,500. And you know, I'm, I'm used to, you know, Edinburgh audiences, mm. but about this size. <laughs> uh, but that, the, yeah, it was, it was fantastic. And coming out and having. You know, people knew the words to the songs and coming out as the Four Georges and feeling like, you know, that was, that felt like I was in a boy band. I yeah. never even knew I had that ambition. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can see why they do it now. Mm. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it was wonderful. It was an amazing experience. Um, we're going to look at the prom in a minute, but we've got, we've got, some, we've got some questions on the, on the, on the Morefoot hashtag. Any chance of a Horrible Histories movie? Wow, we are trying to make one, yes. Uh, it's, it's currently in the bit uh, of negotiation whereby we're trying to, trying to sort out the rights, which is very complicated because Scholastica are an American company, so um, there's a lot of, kind of, lot of conversations to be had, but mm. the ambition is certainly to try and make a film because we think, you know, in the sort of Python mould of going yeah. from sketch show to movie, um, that's the idea. So hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Wow. And, uh, um, of course, the, you, the BBC One version, there were two questions about the BBC One mm -hmm. version, um, from Career Makeover um, and Alex Fagan. They're, they're asking kind of the, the, kind of the same thing. Um, how did the Sunday evening programme with Stephen Fry come about? Was this to target family audiences? And then the, the second question really follows on from this. Did you like the changes made for the BBC One movie? Well, the version BBC of? One version came at a time, it was just before the British Comedy Award, and it was still very much a children's programme. And I think that by the time it came out, it had sort of made the transition because we'd won the Comedy Award and people were a lot more aware of it. Yeah. Um, I noticed with that show being on, a lot more adults had seen the show. Before that, it was mostly parents. Mm. Um, and after it, a lot more. It, it gave... The thing about a children's show is unless you have children or you make the effort to go to the website and watch the show, I mean, I know all about Rasta Mouse, but I don't have a child, so I, unless I go and look at it online, you, you will know about the cultural phenomenon, but you won't necessarily have seen the show. So it gave a lot of people the opportunity to see it. Um, it was done on a, on a shoestring, and mm -hmm. it was kind of an experiment of what would we do if it was in, in prime time. And so, I mean, it, it's, it, it, it did a job. Yeah, I liked it in... There were things I would do differently if we did it again, but um, but you but know. But a bit of a detour from your established way of doing things. Well, what it was, all it was, was we got all the sketches that felt like they would work for adults. So we took because when you look at it and you think this is going to go out in at tea time, some of the sketches are very kiddie, and then we wrote links for Stephen Fry yeah. to, to connect them, and it sort of it was a kind of experiment of what would you do. But as I say, you know, when people say to me, "What would you do if you were doing this for adults?" The truth is, when you look at it, you think I'd do the same thing. So. Yeah. It's, um, I don't know how it would play if you just played the show on, on Sunday tea times. I think it might feel a bit young, but I don't know. It's hard to judge. So well, I, I've watched it at all times of day mm. in great giant chunks because of my daughter, Willow, who's here. Now, Willow, you, I, I want to ask a question. Mm. Is there a fact from the programme you remember? Is there a favourite sketch? Because you, you got the chance to say thank you to the people who made it, if you want, if you want to do that, for filling an afternoon while I was doing something else. Is there a particular favourite bit? Do you remember that sketch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I remember yeah. all my Water and frog. I love yeah, yeah. Walter, yeah, Walter Raleigh was known as Water. Yeah. Water. Because yeah. he had a West Country accent. Pink Stuff mean. I've learned from horror yeah. stories. <laughs> well, that, well, well, I mean, we're nearing the end now. I think we want a big finish. 
uh, with the prom. Should we have a look at the prom, the Vikings at the prom? As I, was, I, I think a thank you to the panel for joining us today and talking to us about the show. And here's <laughs> Horrible History's prom. Well, thanks everyone for coming. Um, I think uh, uh, you'd probably agree with me when I say I wish you all more success and brilliant, horrible history future. Uh, it's been a real pleasure talking to you, Caroline, Simon, Greg and Martha. Um, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, see you next time when it's Horrible History's 25th series, <laughs> How the Christ Have You Managed That. Um, thank you to the panel again. Thanks for coming. Thank you.